次はただいまから
a security related uh, to further conclude uh, the security related agreements and also actively make use of OSA again confirmed the importance of mitigating impacts on the local communities, including Okinawa. We also confirmed that in order to avoid the continuous usage of the Futema airfield, a move to Henoko is the only solution. I again asked the U.S. side for safe operation, giving utmost consideration for impact on the local community, as well as to appropriately respond to incidents and accidents, including early notification and cooperation to an environment. And we are to closely work together. I also mentioned the recent incidents in Okinawa and stated that they were truly regrettable. What is important is to make sure that uh, the measures the U.S. announced are to be implemented, leading to the prevention of recurrence. We concurred that we, the ministry level, will also follow it uh, up properly. At this 2 plus 2, WPS uh, was discussed for the first time. As mentioned in the joint statement, uh, we will pursue uh, WPS uh, in the joint exercise and, oh, and other bilateral herd activities. As a person engaged in WPS, I am truly delighted. Based on the joint statement, we will continue to commit uh, to the WPS. Now, separately from Japan-US 2 plus 2, this time for the first time, we conducted Japan-US ministerial the meeting uh, focusing on extended uh, deterrence. At this meeting, we have been able to deepen uh, our uh, discussion through extended deterrence uh, consultations between the two countries, and we were able uh, to, de uh, to uh, deepen uh, uh, the understanding at the ministerial level on extended uh, deterrence, and uh, we uh, were able uh, to put forward uh, a further strengthened message, message in and out of uh, Japan. In order to fully defend international order, uh, we had the need to further deepen and develop Japan-U.S. alliance and enhance the deterrence. Together with Minister Kihara and the two secretaries, I will commit myself firmly. Minister Kihara, thank you very much. With the gratifying presence of Secretary Austin and Secretary Blinken, we engaged in a straightforward discussion on how to further fortify the deterrence and response capabilities of the Japan-U.S. alliance. As Minister Kamikawa mentioned, the security environment surrounding us has never been so severe, and in order to maintain the free and open in the Pacific, the role that the Japan-U.S. alliance must play is becoming larger. During this Japan-U.S. 2 plus 2, in accordance with the new strategic initiative announced by the Japanese and U.S. leaders in April, the progress of various initiatives to modernize uh, the Japan-U.S. alliance were confirmed, and opinions on the future direction were exchanged. In particular, regarding uh, the enhancement of the respective control and command frameworks of both Japan and the U.S., which is instructed by the leaders of Japan and the U.S. to discuss at the 2 plus 2, we have confirmed the fundamental perspective related to the control and command, including our coordination between the JJOC of the SDF and the U.S. command, and agreed to discuss further by setting up a Japan-U.S. working group. As the supply of equipment is tightening across the world and as the reinforcement of the entire production capacity and the defense industry foundation of the Japan-U.S. alliance are extremely important, we welcome the progress of the Forum of Defense, Industrial Cooperation, Acquisition, and Sustainment, DICAS. Regarding PAC-3 MSC and AIM-120 and RAM, we agreed to pursue co-production opportunities that are mutually beneficial to both Japan and the U.S. But furthermore, in order to respond to the increasing security-related challenges in the region, it is crucial to optimize uh, the force posture of the alliance. Uh, the U.S. plan uh, to modernize uh, the tactical fighters of the USFJ across Japan is in alignment with the circumstances, and Japan and the U.S. will continue to cooperate towards stable operations. On top of that, regarding the realignment of the U.S. forces, we have 
We affirmed our firm commitment to the steady execution of the realignment of U.S. forces in Japan in accordance with the Okinawa Consolidation Plan and towards the full reversion of the air station Futenma as soon as possible. We emphasize the importance of the acceleration of the efforts by Japan and the U.S., including the construction of the Futenma replacement facility in Hinoko. Furthermore, we once again confirmed that the relocation of the Marine Corps stationed in Okinawa to Guam will start this year. In addition to that, we also checked the progress of cooperation in various areas, such as the standoff defense capability, which is critical for our country to fundamentally reinforce our defense capability, the enhanced bilateral presence in the Southwest Island, ISR cooperation, including BIAC, cross-domain operations, including space, cyber, and electromagnetics, and information warfare, which is another area of cooperation, and have firmly confirmed the direction of our efforts to achieve further outcomes with Secretary Austin and Secretary Blinken. In addition to uh, the Japan US 2 plus 2, we uh, managed to hold the Japan US ministerial meeting on extended deterrence this time. Since 2010, the extended deterrence dialogue, EDD, has been held periodically at the working officials level, but in view of the severe security environment, including nuclear, it was extremely meaningful that the first ministerial meeting dedicated and standard on to extended deterrence was held where intensive discussions took place. Uh, the Japan-US alliance has been the cornerstone of our country's security policy and has continued to be the uh, foundation, linchpin, of uh, the peace, security, and prosperity of the region. As uh, the free and open international order based on the rule of law are seriously challenged by unilateral changes or attempts to change the status quo by force and the international community entering a new era of crisis, I am convinced that the Japan-US alliance will become even more significant. The Japan US 2 plus 2 held today is an important step forward in order to pioneer such a new era. And by working together with my three reliable colleagues here with me today, I will demonstrate my steadfast determination to realize the free and open Indo-Pacific by my words and deeds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister. I the Secretary Blinken to take the floor. Thank you. Well, let me uh, first begin by thanking Foreign Minister Kamikawa, uh, Defense Minister Kihara, not only for the very warm welcome today, but also for the very productive discussions. And as always, I'm grateful to be joined by my friend and partner, uh, Secretary of Defense Austin. Uh, with uh, their indulgence, I just want to say a few words quickly about the election that will take place today in Venezuela before talking about the discussions that we had. Uh, Venezuelans will cast their votes for president. This is a pivotal event at a pivotal time, given the severe political, humanitarian, and economic crises the country faces. The United States, the international community, strongly support Venezuelans' right to vote. And we've championed the Barbados Agreement between the uh, uniform uh, opposition platform and the Maduro uh, government uh, to restore political freedoms to Venezuela. Uh, even though Maduro uh, and his representatives have fallen short of many of the commitments that were made in that agreement. Despite facing severe repression, there is enormous enthusiasm across the country about this election. The United States is not going to prejudge the outcome. This is a choice for Venezuelans to make. But the Venezuelan people deserve an election that genuinely reflects their will, free from any manipulation. The entire international community is going to be watching this very closely. We urge all parties to honor their commitments and to respect the democratic process. Having said that, um, Japan was the first country that Lloyd and I visited uh, upon taking office. This is now my sixth visit to Japan, my 18th visit to the region over the last three and a half years. It's a demonstration that for over 70 years, the United States-Japan alliance has been the cornerstone for peace, for stability in the Indo-Pacific 
and now beyond. And it's helping make our own people more free, more secure, more prosperous. Today's meeting delivered on commitments that President Biden and Prime Minister Kashida made during the Prime Minister's state visit to Washington in April, modernizing our alliance for the future. Just over the last 36 hours, we have a number of firsts, and these firsts are going to have a qualitative impact on our alliance, on its strength, uh, on its fitness for purpose. First, we agreed to upgrade our respective command and control structures, including a new Joint Forces Headquarters to meet the challenges of this moment. Second, we held our first standalone ministerial on extended deterrence, demonstrating clearly, in other words, that our ironclad commitment to defend our allies with the full range of our conventional and nuclear deterrence capabilities is fully in force. Third, through a new forum on defense industrial cooperation, we launched co-production of advanced missiles. Uh, we're leveraging Japan's manufacturing capability to collectively produce critical national security technology. Uh, we do this at a time when we've seen some of the challenges that we all face to uh, our defense industrial bases. Our collaboration will strengthen our mutual capacity. All of this underscores that our alliance has never been stronger. In fact, in my judgment, it's actually stronger than it's ever been. Uh, this is thanks to our work over the last three and a half years. And I have to say the relationship is also deeper and broader than it's ever been before, more ambitious than it's ever been. We have a shared vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific. We strongly oppose the PRC's efforts to unilaterally change the status quo by force in the East China Sea and the South China Sea around Taiwan. We agree on the importance of upholding peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. We continue to condemn the DPRK's reckless and unlawful nuclear and missile programs. We've taken concrete steps, including increased U.S., Japan, and ROK exercises, sharing real-time missile warning data to enhance our ability to detect and to deter threats. We are strengthened by Tokyo's transformational investments and in policies over the last few years, from new defense strategies to a 2% defense spending target for their budget. We are also here at a time where we are deepening our network of partners across the board. Uh, we have an alliance that's anchoring a network of increasingly integrated allies and partners in the region and beyond, and in particular, connecting Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Um, we just came from ASEAN, whose centrality remains vital to the Indo-Pacific. Tomorrow, we have a meeting of the Quad with the U.S., Japan, India, Australia. We're enhancing trilateral cooperation uh, with Korea, building on the Camp David Summit. We're also strengthening the trilateral partnership between Japan, the Philippines, and the United States. Uh, Secretary in Austin and I will next go to Manila for our own uh, U.S.-Philippines 2 plus 2. Uh, we're exploring Japan cooperating on AUKUS uh, on advanced capability projects. And of course, we welcome Prime Minister Kishida, as well as other Indo-Pacific partners, to the NATO summit earlier this month. That's the third time that Japan has attended, along with Korea, Australia, and New Zealand. And what we're seeing here is something that I think is uh, truly new and important in the work that we've done. Uh, as I said, building a bridge between our Atlantic partnerships and alliances and our Indo-Pacific alliances and partnerships. It's a reflection of the fact that security in both of these critical theaters really is uh, indivisible, inseparable. Um, Prime Minister Kishida was one of the ones who made this so clear so eloquently when just days after the Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine, he made the point that what was happening in Europe today could well happen in this region tomorrow. We deeply appreciate Japan's strong and sustained support, not only for Ukraine, uh, but also for all of the work that we're doing together as allies and partners. When Prime Minister Kishida addressed Congress, he reminded the United States, uh, reminded us, excuse me, that the United States and Japan are tomodachi, the closest of friends. He said, and I quote, that we stand side by side to ensure the survival of liberty, not just for our people, but for all people. And we will continue to work with Japan as friends to do just that.
ありがとうございます。Thank you very much. So now I'd like to invite、uh, Secretary Austin to make remarks. Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to be back in Japan for my third visit as Secretary of Defense. Minister Kihara, Minister Kamikawa, thanks for hosting us today in,、uh, in Tokyo. Under the firm leadership of President Biden, we've made extraordinary progress together. To make this region more secure, we've had a truly consequential US Japan 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting today, strengthening, strengthening our partnership and adding new momentum to our shared vision for a free and open Indo Pacific. We are reinforcing our combined ability to deter and respond to co coercive behavior in the Indo Pacific and beyond. We're reinforcing the rules based international order that keeps us all safe. And the agreements that we've advanced today will ensure that the US Japan alliance remains the cornerstone of security and stability in the Indo Pacific. First, we welcome an historic decision to modernize our alliance command and control to better meet the challenges of today and tomorrow. The United States will upgrade the U.S. Force, Forces Japan to a joint force headquarters with expanded missions and operational responsibilities. Now, this will be the most significant change to U.S. Forces Japan since its creation, and one of the strongest improvements in our military ties with Japan in 70 years. Japan's new Joint Operations Command will further allow our forces to work together more closely than ever. And these new operational capabilities and responsibilities will advance our collective deterrence. I look forward to our continued work with the government of Japan and the U.S. Congress to ensure that we implement these changes effectively. Second, We discuss ways to increase our bilateral presence in the Southwest Islands, recognizing that local coordination is crucial to sustaining our activities there. Third, we reaffirm the importance of cooperation and cybersecurity, on cybersecurity, ISR, cross domain operations, and bilateral exercises and training. And fourth, We discuss new areas for defense industrial cooperation.、And、that includes missile co production, ship repair, and supply chain resilience. And finally, we held a separate 2 plus 2 ministerial level meeting on extended deterrence. And that has never been done before. And during that meeting, I reaffirmed our ironclad commitment to defend Japan with the full range of our capabilities. Including our nuclear capabilities.、And、let me again underscore that Article 5 of the Mutual Security Treaty applies to the Senkaku Islands. And so we got a lot done. Today we unveil some of the most important advances in the US Japan defense ties in the history of our alliance. And the bottom line is clear. The US Japan alliance is stronger today than ever and getting stronger by the day.、And、I look forward to building on this momentum and to strengthening regional peace and stability for years to come. Thanks again. Thank you very much. We will start the QA. Please raise your hand when I invite you. Please tell us your name and affiliation before you ask the question. Please limit your question only to one per person and please make it clear to whom you are asking your question. So, first, inviting the Japanese press, please. Yes, please. Your Miyuri Shimbun, Mr. Kamimura. Yes, Kamimura from Yomiri newspaper. I have my question to Minister Kamikawa and Secretary Blinken. 
Um, in the surrounding areas of uh, Japan, uh, the China is continuing its rapid military uh, expansion, including the nuclear, and also unilateral attempts uh, to change the status quo. And more recently, there are military exercises around uh, the Taiwan, and they are conspicuously applying military coercion on the Philippines in the South China Sea. On the other hand, uh, Russia uh, is approaching North Korea, which is a huge concern uh, against these, uh, the backdrop. How do you regard uh, the role to be played by Japan-U.S. alliance and as uh, you recognize the current the situation of heightening uh, uh, tension in the Indo-Pacific. Now there will be presidential election in November. So how would you regard the deepening of Japan-U.S. cooperation going forward because the change of government may happen? So let me first respond to this question. Uh, the international community is increasingly uh, divided. Uh, developments that have shaken the very foundation of the free and open international order are continuing. At the 2 plus 2 meeting at uh, this time, uh, we were able uh, to align and coordinate uh, the perception on the difficult regional security environment and including the points that you have made. Uh, the outward stance of China, as well as uh, its military uh, the actions, are of uh, serious concern. We have been able to agree uh, that it is a concern uh, to the region as well as the international community. We were able to share uh, the uh, further strategic military cooperation between Russia and China. And we were able to reaffirm uh, the commitment to fully denuclearize uh, North Korea. Uh, and as for uh, Russia and North Korea military cooperation, we have shared the concern uh, for the possibility of military assistance from Russia uh, to North Korea. As we see even more difficult security uh, environment, uh, Japan-US alliance, which is the core, which have the core uh, of a security regime between our two countries. Uh, which is something indispensable not only for the security of Japan, uh, but uh, for the peace and stability to be realized for the international community, including the Indo-Pacific. And the importance of the alliance uh, is uh, rising as never before. Uh, with such a perception at the 2 plus 2 meeting this time, at the ministerial level, four of us were able to have very frank uh, and at a very uh, productive uh, discussion, more specifically on command and control, uh, on defense equipment, as well as uh, advanced uh, technology uh, cooperation, and uh, the partnership with the like-minded countries, and the presence in the, uh, the southwest or the Nanse uh, the islands, and also to have cross-domain uh, operations, uh, to have a broader-based uh, security and defense cooperation. We were able to have discussion on that. Uh, as for the U.S. Uh, situation, uh, we are watching with keen interest, but in any case, in order to completely and thoroughly defend the international order, uh, Japan and the U.S., uh, based upon the 2 plus 2 the meeting outcome, well, we should continue uh, to enhance our deterrence power. The uh, challenges, the threats that you uh, pointed to are concerns not only for uh, the United States and Japan, but for many countries uh, across the region and countries well beyond the region. Uh, the relationship between Russia and the DPRK is a two-way street with the DPRK providing Russia with weaponry that it's using in Ukraine, uh, not only to continue its war of aggression against Ukraine, but to attack the very principles at the heart of the international system, territorial integrity, sovereignty, independence, principles that matter not only to Ukraine, not only to countries in Europe, but to countries throughout this region. And similarly, we see the potential uh, for uh, Russia to provide material assistance to the DPRK at a time when it consistently exhibits threatening provocative behavior with Mitchell launches, the possibility of a seventh nuclear test. That's of deep concern to uh, countries throughout this region. Um, and of course, we heard that yesterday as well uh, at uh, the meetings of, uh, with ASEAN, uh, the East Asian Summit, uh, with all uh, and many partners. So. Many of us are doing what's necessary to strengthen our deterrence, to strengthen our defensive capacity, as well as to take necessary actions to um, try to prevent these countries from engaging in these activities. And that's reflected in what we uh, did here today. It's reflected in so much of the work we're doing. It's worth noting that 
our alliance, the other alliances that we're engaged in, each and every one of them is defensive in nature. They have no ambitions toward anyone else uh, and are never have been, never will be offensive in nation. But, uh, but at a time when, unfortunately, these threats are increasing, uh, our alliances, our partnerships, they're getting deeper, they're getting stronger, they're getting more effective. With regard to elections, for all of our democracies, that's a feature. <coughs> um, and what I can say with regard to the United States and Japan is we have an alliance that's endured, but not only endured for decades, has gotten stronger. And as I think we've all reflected, in this moment, the alliance is stronger than it's ever been. And the reason for that is because it's manifestly in the interests of our people, the Japanese people, the American people, people well beyond our countries. And precisely because of that interest, I think it will, in fact, I, more than I think, I know it will be sustained irrespective of the outcome of elections in either of our countries. Thank you very much. Inviting the press from the United States. Uh, please raise your hand. Please tell us your name and affiliation. Uh, tell us who you're asking your question, please. Yes, please. Mr. Michael Gordon, Wall Street Journal. Right. Um, Michael Gordon, Wall Street Journal. Um, I have a question for Secretary Austin and Japanese Defense Minister. Um, uh, Secretary Austin, um, uh, as you've uh, uh, pointed out, uh, the, uh, the U a st significant step has been taken by overhauling uh, Joint Forces Command and tur by turning uh, the U.S. forces in Japan into Joint Forces Command. But the concept that you've articulated here is very general, and I'd like to give you an opportunity to define it in a little more specificity given the stakes involved. Um, American officials have yet to uh, spell out what the geographical uh, responsibilities of this command would be. Would it be uh, limited to the defense of Japan or would it be broader than that? Um, American officials have said that this command would be uh, established through a phased approach. Uh, how long is this going to take given the uh, urgency of the Chinese threat? When will this be up and running? And do you anticipate that there will be a cell uh, where uh, U.S. and Japanese officials might meet together side by side to coordinate during a crisis. And lastly, it's a three-star command. Japan, we understand it, preferred a four-star command. Have you ruled that out? And to the Japanese uh, defense minister, sir, um, uh, would Japan prefer that this um, uh, joint forces command be a four-star command as it is in South Korea? Would that be a better outcome? for you. And with your indulgence, given the crisis in the Middle East, I have one quick question for Secretary Blinken. Um, does the U.S. assess that the rocket attack on the Golan Heights that hit the soccer field was the work of Hezbollah? What steps is the U.S. taking at this juncture to avoid a wider war in that part of the world? And if war does break out, will the U.S. have Israel's back and perhaps intervene militarily to defend Israel as it did against the Iranian missile and drone attack? Thank you. Well, thanks, Michael. As That was about 30 questions as I count, but uh, <laughs> all wrapped into one. Uh, it's good to see you, Michael. Um, you heard me say earlier that this is an historic decision, and, and uh, you certainly recognize that given your background. You know, our alliance uh, is stronger than ever, and I think uh, our approach to command and control has to reflect that. Uh, and the speed of action, the speed of activity that we can expect to see in the future uh, is such that we need to do everything we can to streamline things to make sure that, that uh, we remain relevant and decisive uh, in, in the battle space as we work together as, uh, as allies. Um, and so I think, you know, our bilateral approach to, uh, to this, this command and control effort uh, reflects that. Uh, and so with the upgrade of uh, uh, U.S. forces Japan uh, to a joint force headquarters, uh, you know, we'll have a direct, the U.S. will have a direct leadership role in planning and leading uh, U.S. forces in both peacetime and, uh, and uh, potential crises. Uh, and that'll give us uh, 
uh, an opportunity to work more closely together uh, to ensure uh, greater peace and stability. Now, you mentioned, um, you asked how long it's going to take, uh, given the fact that uh, you know, the concerns of you know, China um, uh, presenting us challenges in the, in the region. Our, our decision to move in this direction is not based upon any threat from China. It's based on our, our desire and our, uh, our ability to work uh, closer together uh, and to be more effective. And uh, you also asked whether or not I'd, we'd ruled out uh, this command ever uh, developing into a four-star command. No, we haven't ruled that out. Again, we're going to continue to work with the, uh, the government of Japan. We're going to continue to work with our Congress uh, to make sure that, uh, that we get this right. And I do believe that, uh, that you know, we're off to a great start. And again, it's the phased approach because, as you know, standing up a joint headquarters, you can't snap your fingers and do that overnight. There are a lot of things that you have to take into consideration. Uh, and, uh, and I think our, our commanders have done a great job of, uh, of outlining uh, the way ahead. Uh, and so I'm confident that this is going to add great value to our overall effort. So. If I may, about the Joint Force Headquarters of the U.S., that is, after the consultation between the two countries, it will be a phased approach, and it will be one of the most important counterpart of JJOC. That is what is expected. As for the details going forward, there will be a working group of both Japan and the U.S., and at this moment, it has not been decided. At the moment, the USFJ is led by a three-star indeed, but at any rate, the JJOC of self-defense forces and the U.S. counterpart and the details, I will repeat myself, but it will be up to the discussion of the working group of U.S. and Japan. In this regard, on the U.S. side, the U.S. Congress will also have to be consulted, and therefore that is also what we understand. With regard to uh, the, uh, the Golan Heights, uh, first let me say that we are deeply saddened by the loss of life that we saw. Uh, there is no justification for terrorism, period, and every uh, indication is that indeed the rockets were uh, from, uh, or the rocket was from Hezbollah. Um, we stand by Israel's right to defend its citizens from terrorist attacks. And one of the reasons that we're continuing to work so hard for a ceasefire in Gaza is not just for Gaza, but also so that we can really unlock an opportunity to bring calm, lasting calm, across the blue line between Israel uh, and Lebanon. Um, we're determined to, to bring the Gaza conflict to a close. It's gone on for far too long. It's cost far too many lives. We want to see Israelis, we want to see Palestinians, we want to see Lebanese live free from the threat of conflict and violence. And again, specifically with regard to the blue line, uh, it's so important that we uh, help defuse that conflict, uh, not only prevent it from escalating, prevent it from spreading, uh, but to defuse it because you have so many people in both countries, in both Israel and Lebanon, who've been displaced from their homes. 60 or 70,000 Israelis, roughly the same number of Lebanese, and absent a secure environment, they're not going to be able to go home. So we're determined to do that. We're in conversations with the government of Israel. Um, and again, I emphasize its right to uh, defend its citizens and our determination to uh, make sure that they're able to do that. But uh, we also don't want to see the conflict escalate. We don't want to see it spread. That has been uh, one of our goals from day one, from, uh, from October 7th on, uh, and we'll continue uh, to, uh, to do that. But again, the best way to do that in a sustained way is to get the ceasefire in Gaza that we're working so hard on virtually every minute of the day. Thank you very much. And then again, inviting the Japanese press, please raise your hand. Uh, yes, please. Mr. Tanaka, GG Press. This is Tanaka of JJ Press. 
I have a question to Minister Kihara, Secretary Austin. But the progress of the reinforcement of deterrence and response capabilities of the alliance have been confirmed at today's 2 plus 2. The extended deterrence was held at the ministerial level for the first time. How will it enhance the reliability of the extended deterrence going forward, like making the ministerial periodic? But at the same time, issues have emerged, such as crimes committed by U.S. service persons in Japan or the inappropriate treatment of specifically designated secrets by self-defense forces, and the, the foundation of the alliance might be shaken. How will you deal with this? With the election coming in the U.S., domestic politics are overheating, and there could be a change in the administration. How will you defend the Japan-U.S. collaboration that you have deepened so far and further develop the relationship? And then, let me start. But first, the question about the extended uh, deterrence. As I mentioned at my initial remarks, in addition to uh, the 2 plus 2, we held the first ministerial level meeting dedicated to extended deterrence, and we had an ex intensive discussion, which was extremely significant. At this moment, nothing has been decided about the future, but also going forward through the extended deterrence a dialogue held at the working level and at high-level talks, such as today's ministerial, I wish to advance our efforts to further raise the reliability of the extended deterrence of the United States. You asked about the recent incident by the U.S. service persons and information security. During today's 2 plus 2, I raised the recent case that happened in Okinawa, and both myself and Minister Kamikawa, both of us mentioned that it is truly regrettable and mentioned that it is crucial to steadily implement the measures that the U.S. announced to prevent recurrence. We then agreed to properly follow up on this matter at the ministerial level as well. About the information security? Yes, indeed. Regarding information security in the context of our discussion on the reinforcement of the deterrence and response capabilities of the Alliance, we must again affirm the importance of information security as the foundation of the Alliance and discussed uh, the deepening of our cooperation on uh, the inappropriate treatment of uh, especially designated secrets. I have learned that after the news went public, the Deputy Press Secretary of the USDOD said that they are confident about the relationship between Japan and U.S. government and uh, that between the SDF and the U.S. military, but in order to maintain and strengthen uh, the confidence of uh, the U.S. side under my strong leadership, I will do my utmost to fundamentally reinforce the information security regime of the entire ministry. Lastly, There was a question about the presidential election. Uh, yes, about the U.S. presidential election and related to the future of our alliance. As uh, the government of Japan, it is hard for us to respond prematurely or prejudge on the election outcome, but for long, uh, the bilateral alliance has been unwavering, and the importance of the alliance, I believe it is shared by common recognition by both the Democratic and the Republican parties uh, between the two governments at uh, various levels, such as the ministerial level, policy official levels, and between the units and the troops, a close coordination has been accumulated even during peacetime. And looking back at our history, I believe the bilateral defense cooperation have achieved concrete results based on such multi-layered connections. Regardless of the presidential election outcome, uh, based on the new strategic initiatives announced at the Leader Summit in April, uh, the discussions, and also based on the discussion we had during this 2 plus 2 and others, uh, the Ministry of Defense will further advance the discussions and endeavor to achieve concrete results in order to reinforce the deterrence and response capabilities of the Japan-U.S. alliance. Well, well thank you uh, for the question. Um, as you heard us say, this uh, two plus two, separate two plus two ministerial meeting that we had on extended deterrence is the first of its kind, never been done before. And I certainly won't go into the details of uh, what was discussed, but I can tell you uh, that I reaffirm the United States' commitment to uh, defend Japan with the full range of our capabilities. 
and that includes nuclear capabilities. Um, regarding the sexual assault uh, issue, I, uh, I would just highlight for you that, number one, I agree with uh, both ministers have, have said already that these, these are regrettable incidents. And they certainly don't reflect uh, the core values of the United States military. And our leadership has put uh, uh, measures in place uh, to ensure that these kinds of things uh, don't happen again in the future. Uh, and our leadership, again, is, uh, is, I think, focused on the right things in terms of working with local leadership and working with, uh, with the government of Japan uh, to ensure that, uh, that you know, we, we continue to address these issues. Uh, on the issue of info security, I think it's important that uh, we be able to uh, trust our allies and partners. And, uh, and as I look at how this situation evolved, uh, it was, uh, as Minister Kiara has said, uh, it was uh, quickly identified, uh, uh, leadership took appropriate action and reported it. Uh, and that in and of, in and of itself creates a, a measure of trust that, uh, that I think uh, will serve us well going forward. And I appreciate uh, his personal involvement to ensure that, uh, you know, we, we uh, do the right things to protect uh, our information. But again, uh, whether it's, um, yeah, no matter what it is, uh, cyber issues or, or, or uh, document security, uh, we, we will continue to be challenged. Uh, all of us will continue to be challenged, and we have to do the right things to take care uh, of our, of our uh, to, to protect our information here. Um, regarding the election you know, and, and potential outcomes, again, I certainly won't speculate on outcomes uh, at the podium here. What I can tell you, though, is that I continue to see strong bipartisan support uh, for Japan. And uh, it's been that way over 70 years, and it will continue to be that way going forward. And any time you see that level of bipartisan support in our government, uh, you can expect that uh, things will continue to, uh, to improve and strengthen, and no matter who's in charge. So uh, again, um, I think the things that we have done here today uh, are extraordinary uh, and speak to that strength of, 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 of uh, commitment, that strength of relationship that we have, and, and uh, I believe it's going to be there for some time to come. So. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, time is running, so we will accept one last question uh, from the U.S. side. So, Mr. Pa Patrick Tucker from Defense One, please. Hi, Patrick Tucker from Defense One. Uh, for uh, uh, Secretary Austin and uh, Minister Kihara, you mentioned today the industrial forum and agreements or understandings made about co-production of different counter-strike capabilities. Can you give us some more details and elaborate on specifics there? Are there timelines? Is there, are there production numbers that you're anticipating in terms of uh, uh, counter-strike capabilities like PAC-3 and AMRAM missiles? Uh, what can we expect? Uh, and for uh, Minister Kihara and Secretary Blinken, does Japan and the United States, do you both share an understanding of the role each country would play in the event of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan in the next five years? Thank you. Well, thanks for the question. Um, I, I don't have any announcements to make today in terms of details on, on co-production. What I can tell you, though, what's important is that uh, we have uh, we, we have committed to working together on producing counter-strike capability, and that commitment is real. And our staffs continue to do the hard work uh, to uh, ensure that this this becomes a reality. And uh, and I'm I'm pretty excited about that. It will in, increase our uh, in, enable us to increase our magazine depth in a, in a number of areas uh, and increase interoperability as well. So. Um, I think the important part here, though, is that is that you know we continue this work, and, and it is it is uh, it is serious and, and earnest work. And I think that uh, you know when the appropriate time um, 
comes, we'll make the announcements from the podium. So. Then, if I may, that the role of U.S. and Japan and the alliance, as Secretary Austin mentioned, we have the Senkaku Islands of Japan. In the case of contingency around the Senkaku, that would invoke Article 5 of the Security Alliance. In addition to that, for specifics and details, I will refrain from discussing. Thank you very much. This is the end of the joint press conference. Thank you very much. Uh, please do not forget to return your translation receiver. Thank you.